Hey, it's Mr. Leatherwood. Today we are subtracting decimals. Hopefully you've watched the video on adding decimals and we really focused on a couple of things. We focused on lining up our decimals. We focused on how we're reading these decimals to make sure we're practicing that every time we look at a new number. We also practiced if we had any gaps in our numbers, filling those empty gaps with zeros. And you're going to see, hopefully, we're going to see an example of that on here uh, and show you why. All right, so we start with 4 and 35 hundredths minus 3 and 26 hundredths. All right, so again, I am going to do my decimals first. That way I make sure that I line up my decimals. So I'm going to write 4 and 30 five hundredths and three and twenty six hundredths. All right, we are subtracting this time. So it gets a little tricky because now we got to start to regroup if we can't subtract. So when I look at my, my hundredths place and I start this subtraction process, I know that I can't subtract six from five. So I have to regroup. So I'm gonna go next door and I'm gonna steal a 10th. So now we have two tenths and this changes to 15. Now I can subtract 15 minus six. I like to put six in my head and count up to 15, but you can do it however you want. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I get nine hundredths. And then two minus two is nice and easy for us. That's nothing. And then four minus three gives us one. So we have one and nine hundredths. And again, if you can say it is a decimal, you can write it one and nine hundredths as a fraction, okay? This is not what we're testing right now or what we're focusing on, but if you practice doing it every time you say a decimal, you're gonna be so much better down the road. All right, let's try another one. Five and 82 hundredths minus two and five tenths, okay? So let's see here. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and do my decimals first. You don't have to do this, but it just it's a trick that I do just to make sure that I line everything up. So five and 82 hundredths, two and five tenths, okay? Remember, if there's any gaps, so right here there's a gap, I'm gonna put a zero there. I'm just gonna fill that in. It's not gonna make a huge difference on this problem, but it may going forward. Two minus zero is two. Eight minus five is three. Five minus two is three. So we didn't have to regroup. We didn't have to do anything. That was nice and easy. So we say this number three and 32 hundredths. So if I wanted to write it as a fraction, three and 32 hundredths. Very good. Again, not a priority, but if you practice it, you'll be better at it later. All right, let's see here. 12 and 75 hundredths minus six and eight hundredths. All right, so again, I'm gonna line up my decimals, even in my answer. And I'm gonna fill everything in. 12 and 75 hundredths minus six and eight hundredths. Okay, don't have any gaps. Um, I guess if we wanted to, we could put a zero here. I normally don't if it's a, on the this side. I definitely will if it's on this side of the decimal, but you can do whatever you want. All right, five minus eight, can't do that. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna borrow a 10th, which turns this into a 15. 15 minus eight, again, I'll put eight in my head and count up eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I get 7. 6 minus 0 is 6. I can't do 2 minus 6, so I have to regroup. Or you could just see that it's just 12 here, minus 6. So let me show you how most people will do it. They'll mark this out, do a 0, move this, 12. But if you notice, we started off with 12. Look at that. So it's gonna work either way. 12 minus six, that's a double. So I know that it needs to be six. So our answer is six and 67 hundredths. 
if I wanted to practice 6 and 67 hundredths, I can practice it and put it in fraction form. All right, last example. 14 and 7 tenths minus 7 and 58 hundredths. So this is where that putting zeros is going to be super important. I'll show you why. So I'm going to put my decimals even in my answer. Then I'm going to fill in my numbers. 14 and 7 tenths and 7 and 58 hundredths. It's really important that you're lining up your place value, okay? Here is the most important thing when you're subtracting. If you see an empty place, especially on top, you have to put that zero. So I'm gonna put a zero there. You also need to remember, so many people will do zero minus eight equals eight, but you can't take away eight from nothing. So don't make that mistake. That's such a common mistake when we're learning, first learning how to subtract in general or subtract decimals. So I'm gonna regroup. I'm gonna go next door. I'm gonna take one away. That's gonna give us 10. Now I can do it. 10 minus eight is two hundredths. Six minus five tenths is one tenth. And then four minus seven I can't do, but I notice that this is just 14 minus seven. Or if you wanted to do it properly, I'm gonna borrow this one. I add a group of 10 and I get 14. 14 minus seven, that's also a double. So I know that it's seven. And then my answer is seven and 12 hundredths. If I wanted to practice seven and 12 hundredths, looky there. All right, some of the key things you need to remember, lining up the decimals, um, I guess another one we may want to work on right now is making sure the larger number is on top. Uh, that won't always be the case. When you get to sixth grade, we'll start doing negatives, and then we get really fun. So lining up the decimals. Right now, the larger number on top. If we have any gaps, we're going to put a zero. That way we make sure we don't make silly mistakes. Um, and then practice, practice, practice saying these numbers proper way. Okay. Um, and then if you really want, as the bonus... If you want to write them as fractions, too, that'll give you good practice as we move farther into the year. All right, good luck. We're going to practice in class, and you're going to be awesome.